guys, it's Danny. I am here today to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is books. So you guys might know that I wrote The Positively Present Guide to Life. And in this book, there are five different sections that I focus on in terms of how to be positive and present in various aspects of your life. So those sections are home, work, relationships, love, and change. So what I wanted to do today was share a few of my favorite books on each of those topics because obviously I love books. You can see behind me, I have tons of books. People ask me a lot what my favorite book is and that's obviously a very hard question to answer. Anybody who loves books knows how difficult that can be. So I want to share a few of my favorite books based on these different categories that I write about in the Positively Present Guide to Life. So the first category that I mentioned was home. And I have two books that I love. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a huge roundup next week of books that I love in all different areas of life. So I will link that down below once that blog post goes live. So these are just sort of my top favorite in these categories. And the first one I have is it didn't start with you. The subtitle is How Inherited Family Trauma Shapes Who We Are and How to End the Cycle. It's kind of hard to explain, but it basically talks about how trauma can be passed down through generations and sort of what impact that has. I'm just going to read a little bit from each of the books, just like a paragraph or so, um, or maybe a couple paragraphs depending on the book, to give you sort of an idea of the style and the vibe of the book so if you're interested you can check it out because that's one of the things that I love to do when I'm thinking about reading a new book if I'm not sure about it I'll flip open the book and read a page or two and see how I feel about it so that's what I'm gonna do here this is a paragraph that I think sort of describes what the book is about what I've learned from my own experience training and clinical practice is that the answer may not lie within our own story as much as in the stories of our parents grandparents, and even our great-grandparents. The latest scientific research, now making headlines, also tells us that the effects of trauma can be passed from one generation to the next. This bequest is what's known as inherited family trauma, and emerging evidence suggests that it is a very real phenomenon. Pain does not always dissolve on its own or diminish with time. Even if the person who suffered the original trauma has died, even if his or her story lies submerged in years of silence, fragments of life experience, memory, and body sensation can live on, as if reaching out from the past to find resolution in the minds and bodies of those living in the present. That's sort of a taste of what you get from this book, and I really, really like it. I think it can help you deal with any issues you have with um, significant others, with people in your family, like siblings or parents. It's it's a really interesting book, so recommend that one. And the next book that is um, in the home category is, let me organize my books here so I don't repeat them, is Style Statement, Live by Your Own Design. And this is not just about home, it's about your personal style in terms of fashion choices, sort of just in general, how you wanna be living your life. Um, it talks about uh, creativity and celebration. It talks about um, spirit, uh, sensuality, relationships. There's a little thing here of all the different areas. I don't know if you can see that it covers. But anyway, there is one section about home which I found really interesting. Here's in general what the style statement means. Your style statement defines your authentic self. It is a compass for making more powerful choices, a guide for designing a life that reflects your whole being, an anchor, a symbol, a mantra, a declaration, an affirmation, a reminder, you fully expressed. Knowing your style statement helps you to make empowered decisions from your wardrobe and your home to your relationships and your work. And then you have these pages where you can fill stuff out on your own. Look at all this that I filled out. Um, and I really love the home section. Um, what works well for me and you sort of get to talk about your um, space at home and how you feel about it and I think this is great not only for home stuff but just in general trying to figure out your style and even if you're not into fashion or interior design or anything like that it's really good for soul searching type of stuff 
It's a really good book. I really like this one. So next up, moving into the work category, we have The War of Art. Break through the blocks and win your inner creative battles. I find that this book can be inspiring for anybody, particularly people who struggle with procrastination or you know have ideas and feel like, oh, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, and don't feel like they have the time or the inspiration. I think this book is great. This is under the category, The Unlived Life. Most of us have two lives, the life we live and the unlived life within us. Between the two stands resistance. So this book talks a lot about the concept of resistance and how it sort of, I guess, prevents us from doing things that we're sort of destined to do or expressing ourselves fully. This one section about procrastination I found really interesting and think it applies to anybody no matter what your job is. Procrastination is the most common manifestation of resistance because it's the easiest to rationalize. We don't tell ourselves, I'm never going to write my symphony. Instead, we say, I'm going to write my symphony tomorrow. It's a really great book. Even if you're not a creative person or in a creative field, I think you could get a lot out of this. Again, that is The War of Art. And then the next book in the work section, it's called, It's Not How Good You Are, It's How Good You Want to Be. And this is just a little book. Um, I love that it has the foil, the gold, and the silver. But this is a book that actually has to do with advertising. But you don't have to be in an advertising field or even a creative field to be able to get something good out of this book. No matter what business you're in, you can get something out of this book. And this book has pictures. It has sort of big quote type things at the top, um, big quote spreads. If you guys know me, you know I love quotes, so that's definitely appealing, but I feel like it's a very, it's really short and it's really quick read, but it's got a lot of really good nuggets of information and inspiration in it. So here's one page that I found um, particularly inspiring. Firstly, you need to aim beyond what you are capable of. You must develop a complete disregard for where your abilities end. Try to do the things that you're incapable of. If you think you're unable to work for the best company in its sphere, make that your aim. If you think you're incapable of running a company, make that your aim. If you think you're unable to be on the cover of Time Magazine, make that your business to be there. Make your vision of where you want to be a reality. Nothing is impossible. So I think this is really inspiring no matter what industry you work in and even though it is kind of about advertising you really don't have to take it that way because it's a metaphor so that's a good one for work and relationship books um the first one i have is loving what is i read this not long before starting positively present and honestly was a life changer it definitely changed how i see the world and i would recommend reading this no matter what even though this i put this in the relationship section i feel like this could go in any section because it just sort of reframes how you think about things it's loving what is four questions that can change your life this book is a lot about thinking about your thoughts, which is one of the most important things when it comes to trying to live a positively present life. You have to be aware of what you're thinking in order to either change it or accept it or tweak it in some way. One thing that is in this book that I found amazing and really changed how I thought about things is the only time we suffer is when we believe a thought that argues with what is. When the mind is perfectly clear what is is what we want there are a lot of books that talk about this concept um for example the power of now talking about the difference between accepting where you are and having this internal dialogue of what should be this was one of the first books i read that talked about that so i don't know if it's a life-changing book because of that because i hadn't thought about thinking as much or if it really is the best book on this topic but found it really easy to read and very relatable. As I mentioned, um, the subtitle is Four Questions That Can Change Your Life. So I'll tell you what the four questions are. It doesn't give away the book. I still recommend reading it and it goes much more into depth about these questions and what they mean and how to really use them in your own relationships. First question is, is it true? Question two, can you absolutely know that it's true? Three, how do you react when you think that thought? And four, 
who would you be without that thought? If you use these four questions with almost any area of your life, you will see a huge difference because so often we take our thoughts as truth and they're not always. Sometimes they are, but um, there definitely is a disconnect between what is true and what is fact and what we think in our heads. And this book can help you understand that and change some of your thoughts. I love this one. Another one in the relationships category that I read pretty recently is called Quiet, the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. It looks like this. You guys have probably seen it if you like to read because it's been everywhere. And this book is amazing. I personally am an introvert, but either way, I think you need to read this book. If you're introverted or extroverted or you're not sure what you are, it is so, so good. And it can really help you understand yourself if you're an introvert. And if you're not, it can help you understand the people around you who might be introverts or that you maybe don't even know are introverts. Because a lot of times people think introverted people are shy and um, that's not always the case or even quiet. I know the title of the book is quiet, but for example, somebody like me, I don't consider myself a quiet person. In fact, I think I'm kind of loud. <laughs> I also don't think I'm very shy, but I am extremely introverted. This book can really help you understand what that means. I'll read you a little, a little part of this book right here. Our lives are shaped as profoundly by personality as by gender or race. And the single most important aspect of personality, the north and south of temperament, as one scientist puts it, is where we fall in the introvert, extrovert spectrum. Our place on this continuum influences our choice of friends and mates and how we make conversation, resolve differences, and show love. It affects the careers we choose and whether or not we succeed at them. It governs how likely we are to exercise, commit adultery, function well without sleep, learn from our mistakes, place big bets in the stock market, delay gratification, be a good leader, and ask what if. So many things that are impacted by whether or not you are introverted or extroverted, and also whether or not you have a lot of those people in your life, whether it's at work or at home. Introverts and extroverts work differently and they love differently. This is a really important book to read no matter where, <laughs> where you fall on the spectrum because it will really help you either understand yourself or stand, understand other people. Moving on to love, which is another section in my book, right here. I have two books here that I really, really enjoyed reading on the topic of love. One you may be familiar with because it's a pretty popular one, and it is called The Five Love Languages. This is actually um, called The Heart of the Five Love Languages. It's a just little small gift book that kind of goes with and almost sums up the bigger version. I read the bigger version as an ebook, so I don't have that one, but I ended up buying this one when I saw it at a used book sale because I loved it so much. And even though I already read the one, I wanted to have like a little reminder. Basically, if you don't know, the five love languages are the ways that people speak and understand emotional love. There are numerous dialects so just because you identify somebody's love language doesn't mean you're like all set and you figure them out and you're ready to go. Um, obviously, anybody who's been in a romantic relationship knows that it's kind of complicated. But I do find that understanding somebody's love language is really important. And I'll just tell you quickly what they are. There are five of them, obviously. And the first one is words of affirmation. So that's somebody who really likes you know, hearing things like you look beautiful or you did a great job or I love you. Second one is quality time. So that's somebody who would love spending a lot of time with their loved one. Third one is receiving gifts. That happens to be my love language and it sounds materialistic, but that's just something for me that speaks to me. Like it doesn't have to be a big gift, an expensive gift, but if somebody buys me something or, um, you know, makes me something, it's really something that resonates with me and I find it to be one of the best ways to express love and on the flip side I tend to do that with other people which is not good you should do other people's love languages to them so like if they really like quality time you shouldn't be giving them gifts sometimes it's hard not to speak in your own love language because you think oh what would I want oh I would love a gift um, or I'd love a card or I'd love something like that something tangible and so that's what I tend to do for other people so if I'm sending you a card or a gift or something like that it's because I love you 
And the next one, number four, is acts of service. The last one is physical touch. People usually have one that's their main one and then they have something that's like their secondary one. If you go online, you can take a little quiz, I think, and figure out what your love language is and probably get more information about how to you know, share your love language with other people and how to read other people's love languages and work with that in your relationships. Obviously, I don't think this is everything when it comes to relationships, but it's a really good start. The next book I have is Love 2.0, How Our Supreme Emotion Affects Everything We Feel, Think, Do, and Become. Definitely makes you think about love differently. It talks about the scientific stuff, um, you know, the chemicals, the hormones, stuff we don't always think about when we think about love. And I think that's important and also provides guidance on how to take what the book talks about and apply it in your relationship. It really just makes you think differently about love. I know for me personally, it's such an emotional thing. When you get swept up in it, you're not really even thinking about what's going on and how complex it is and how to you know, handle various situations with love because it is such an emotional thing. This is the interesting part that I'll read here. Love, like other positive emotions, literally changes your mind. It expands your awareness of your surroundings, even your sense of self. The boundaries between you and not you, what lies beyond your skin, relax and become more permeable. While infused with love, you see fewer distinctions between you and others. Indeed, your ability to see others, really see them, wholeheartedly springs open. Love can even give you a palpable sense of oneness and connection, a transcendence that makes you feel part of something far larger than yourself. So that's from the part where they're just sort of talking about what love is, but there's so many places that I've underlined. This is one of those books that like every other page, there's stuff underlined. <laughs> Um, definitely a good book if you want to know more about love, whether you're in love, wanting love, you know, been in love forever and, you know, want to maybe refresh your love life. This is a good, good read. So the next section is change and these two books are my favorites. The first one is Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear. And this is just one of my favorite books. It's so good. Like I could read it over and over and over again. And I know I'm not alone. There's so many people that I've seen online um, that just rave about it. And it has a lot to do with creativity, but not in the way that you would think. Um, it's again, like some of the workbooks that I mentioned, um, you don't have to be in a creative field or even consider yourself a creative person to read this book. I'm going to read you this one page. I really would like to read the whole book because it's so good. But this, I think, sort of gives you a little idea of what the book is about and kind of a feel for it. So the section is called Creative Living Defined. So this, I believe, is the central question upon which all creative living hinges. Do you have the courage to bring forth the treasures that are hidden within you? Look, I don't know what's hidden within you. I have no way of knowing such a thing. You yourself may barely know, although I suspect you've caught glimpses. I don't know your capacities, your aspirations, your longings, your secret talents, but surely something wonderful is sheltered inside you. I say this with all confidence because I happen to believe that we are all walking repositories of buried treasure. I believe this is one of the oldest and most generous tricks the universe plays on us as human beings, both for its own amusement and for ours. The universe buries strange jewels deep within us all and then stands back to see if we can find them. The hunt to uncover those jewels, that's creative living. The courage to go on that hunt in the first place, that's what separates a mundane existence from a more enchanted one. I just love the word enchanted, it's so good. The often surprising results of that hunt, that's what I call big magic. And right here on the other page, I'm not, I'm not gonna read you a whole other page, this isn't like story time, but I just wanted to mention that it says, when I talk about creative living here, please understand that I'm not necessarily talking about pursuing a life that is professionally or exclusively devoted to the arts. Even if you're not a creative person, you still should read this. It's so, so good. Love it, love it, love it. Like, I wanna hug it. <laughs> I love it so much. Such a good one. Okay. Getting a little stack over here, books. Okay, the last one 
And one of my other favorites is the crossroads of should and must. Find and follow your passion. So this book, and just like the other one, isn't specifically about change, but I think a lot of the change that we want to initiate in our lives is something to do with following your passion or connecting with more meaningfulness in our lives. And I talk about that in my book, but I also talk about how to deal with change, you know, like difficult change, such as loss or heartbreak and that kind of stuff also. But if you're looking to live a more meaningful life, follow your passion, this is a book for you. Also, this book, not only is the content um, great, but it's just, I'm trying to find like, beautiful, like what? Look at this beautiful stuff. Beautifulness. I mean, obviously I love colors and illustrations and hand lettering and stuff so this greatly appeals to me but it's also got some really really quality thought-provoking content um, in addition to being pretty I'm gonna just read this page right here this page right here is really beautiful I'm just gonna read it to you these pages are a pep talk to honor that voice inside of you that says you have something special to give it's a reminder that while there is no map for where you're going Many have traveled this road before. It's permission to unlearn everything you've ever been told you should do in order to learn what you must. So I love the concept of should versus must. In my own life, I have faced that a lot. There are things that you feel like you should do, follow the normal path, and then there are certain times or certain situations where you feel like you must do something. There's something else in you that you want to share with the world or some sort of change you need to make and it doesn't always have to be a career it, it could be you know a lifestyle change like whatever it is this book can help with change and it also is so pretty so it has a little hashtag on the back which I just noticed choose must so that's all for the books I have um, that correspond with the various sections home work relationships love and change that are in my book and I will have in the um, info box below, I will have links to all these books so that you can check them out if you're interested, including this one. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.